two roll call. So, Randy Sneed, and welcome our new town member, Dylan Ford, Staking Julie Spot, Dustin Johnston, Suzanne Umbaugh, Derek, Jones Attorney, Lisa Laney, Clerk Treasurer, and George Nall. Pledge allegiance. <coughs> Pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. <coughs> Minutes of January 17th, 2018, not 17. Minutes. Um, I'm in development. I put in front of the supplies on the floor. I'm also in the market. I'm in the Five is saying aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carried. Citizens input. Full house, citizens input. Sean Harley. Yeah, I just want to speak a little bit. Uh, I know there's some thought process going on on this uh, donating some money for this housing deal. And not that I don't know that it's a good or a bad idea. I guess I just have an issue with using taxpayer money at the end of the day when we have a lot of projects around this town that needs done that that money could go a long way to fix. Speaking of curbs that are falling apart all over town, there's still a lot of streets around this town that need to be redone. That money would go a long way to benefit all the citizens of this town with taxpayer money instead of building a house or something for somebody that they haven't lived here all their life like I have. And I hate to see our streets and our infrastructure getting as worn down as it is. I really do. I wish that this council would really think hard before they spend this money in what I think would be an unwise way. And I'll end with that. Okay, thank you. Mark Umball. Well, Sean, I disagree. Of course you do, Mark. Come on. Why? You know, we can fix up our curbs, we can fix up our streets, but if the town doesn't grow, it doesn't make any difference. I mean, we've, we've put on, what was it, seven houses in 10 years or something like that. Um, tax, our taxable base has shrunk three or four million dollars over the last several years. <clears throat> so if we don't have housing, we got a, we got a shell building out there that can be as big as 300,000 square feet and could hire manufacturing so. Sorry, Jerry. Let me go back and forth on that. Um, but where are those, you know, if, if, if you get a business in, where, where's that middle management going to live? We, don't, we have no housing for that. We got people that would love to be in the school system. We don't have housing for that. So uh, that's the first thing. Second thing, it's not necessarily <coughs> taxpayer money if we use electric or something like that. I mean, that's coming from utilities. So it's not, it's not a tax base. It's the town's money is the taxpayer's money at the end of the day. I don't care how you look at it, Mark. <coughs> well, no arguments, please. Not arguments. I'm just saying we either grow or we shrink. We spent quite a few years not doing anything, and I think it's time that uh, we've done shell building. We're looking at speedway. We're looking at other things. We're looking at walkways, uh, manufactured housing. So Thank you, sir. Okay. Uh, and I just think it's uh, it's time that we start growing the town. Thank you. Kim. Yeah. I would like to ask if uh, the town can put up their over there on the Dewey Street, since I live there at 416 on the corner in Kenilworth, if they could put up signs for no trucks to let them know they don't turn to the north on Kenilworth, 
just put a sign right there at the end of the road and then possibly as you come off of 10 heading south on Kenilworth they put signs up there letting them know they're not to go down that road I've had semis hit my truck or the rocks I have on the corner of my lot <coughs> three times here in the past month probably and even today they had to come and push a rock back out of the road that the semi had hit and thankful the town moved it they just shoved it right up in the <coughs> yard where it's like three feet away from the rest of the rocks that was hit i think there is there used to be one coming from the north i don't know if there is from the south or not there's one down there towards mcintyres okay. they're down there towards mcintyres it's not right there at the corner where semis could see it and i know their gps is telling them to go straight there at the curve on 10 to come down to go to the bottle cap factory and that to even turn down first street going towards the bottle factory okay we got it wrote down all right thank you anyone else chuck do it um just to address what was talked about earlier with housing and the need and that sort of thing um I've been talking to contractors. Um, I've got two developers right now that are interested in the area uh, there on uh, north of Marshall Street. So if either of those two happen, I don't see that there's going to be any town money going into it. That will be developer money. So hopefully I'll hear something back either by Friday or the first of the week and let you know but um, I, I think that's the best way to do it you don't have taxpayer money but you do need to have some there's no question about that so by doing it that way perhaps everyone could be satisfied and benefit from it okay thank you anyone else Not whole business attorney report. A few things. Start with a couple simple ones first. Uh, the farm lease. I've got that prepared. Um, no reason that we can't go ahead and execute that. I'm still waiting to get it back from uh, Bill Boris. I sent an email to him back on the 19th of January. Didn't hear back from him. Sent him today a reminder, and he says, "Sorry, I'll get it back to you." So. Uh, I'm not really concerned, but just let you know that we still need to get that signed. But here is the uh, actual agreement that can be signed, George. Also, just an update from Adam Lucaville on our tax sale uh, property. Um, he says that the first round of notices are going to be going out this week. He's also going to publish notice. Um, you got to wait 120 days um, and then file a petition requesting the tax deed itself. Um, so I might give one more update from Adam just to make sure things got published or, and things got uh, notices got sent out. But I'm, we're probably going to have a period of time here uh, where we're sitting around and just waiting for the next uh, 120 days, roughly four months. Uh, to see if anything gets redeemed or if he can petition for a tax sale. So I may give you one more update, but then that may be it for a while. So, so clarification, mm -hmm. I was thinking it was April they had, so it's longer than that? According to Adam, it's going to be 120 days from once they issued the notice. And that's when it goes out as sent. Um, so if you say that's this week, four months on top of February, you're looking at some kind of June date, I would, I would assume. Okay. I was under the impression it would be April initially. Four months from the time the town acquired the certificate? Mm -hmm. Yes. Yeah, according to Adam, he sent 120 days from. From the time. Pardon? From the time you filed. No, from the time the notices, the, the notices indicate you have X amount of days. I, I would assume or imagine that's what I'm used to seeing <coughs> on regular tax sales. This one's a little different, but um, it's typically from the notice. 
I should say. I'm not shocked that a deadline would start to run from the date of the notice. <coughs> Next, guys, I've got, uh, it's an issue regarding the manufacturing center. We had a technical review committee meeting today. Uh, this morning, the purpose of that was that Marshall County <coughs> Economic Development Corporation now has a subdivision plat showing basically the, the 30, 31, 32 acres subdivided out into three separate parcels or lots. I think you've all got a copy of that that you can look at there. Um, the one issue that we did discuss at the technical review committee meeting this morning was the fact that parcel number two is where the uh, manufacturing center is being constructed as we speak. It's also the issue that was discussed was that parcel two will be retained by MCDC, but it's 17.82 acres. Um, earlier, the town and MCDC entered into an agreement that said that it would be not more than 15. That was an agreement from back in uh, June of 2017. So it's gonna be up to the town this board the council to say that we would accept less than or i'm sorry that we would allow a transfer to stand of more than the 15. Um, we're looking at 17.82 um, is where that's at right now go ahead Jeff. Um, the technical review committee did vote unanimously to send this to the town council to work out the acreage um, as far as everything else it appears it's going to be done the way that that we want it but uh, after our meeting was over there was some discussion about the road coming in from uh, west street up here um, and i'm kind of in the middle of all of this learning here the west street um, at one time was thought to have come all the way through here to be able to service <coughs> this and this to the back. Um, and I don't know whether discussions were made or not, but if that happens, um, the way that it is now, this is the this is Bowie Street here. This is proposed building here. And these are the different phases that would take this whole facility up to 300,000 square feet. Okay. West Street is right about here. Okay. Um, roughly. The proposal was made that if this street were to come through here, they would. The utilities would want that center line extended through and then um, 30 feet on each side of that. So you would have a 30 foot road, 15 foot, foot easement, 15 foot easement. Now, this, in my opinion, the 300,000 square feet can still happen. It just wouldn't be in a continuous, could slide forward back a little more narrow and up but that's not my decision to make you guys are the ones that are determining the acreage and everything else if you <coughs> back, then it would be back close to the 15 acres that you were talking about and i know what jerry's going to say and he should have his chance to say it and that is that he's marketing this as 300,000 square foot uh, potential facility and he doesn't want to get away from that and i understand that but if we brought this back slightly, move this way, then I think we could do it. They could come in and get a variance to go right up to the lot line because if they were built on the lot line, we would still have 15 foot easement and then a 30 foot road. So they could maintain the end of the building with that 15 feet of easement there. But that's just um, what was discussed and 
that's kind of what it looks like. Um, you guys have any questions about that? So as far as the utilities on that, Jamie, that was the only reason for a straight shot down West Street to extend the utilities so they'd come in? No, we're, we're okay with that. We're going to run the utilities for right now just uh, east. And it'll be in, there's an easement on that on that map there, I think. But what I'm saying is what he was just saying, if we would run a strip to strip. Well, it is, it, if we want to continue West Street on to the south, yeah, that, that could be a... But it doesn't have to join up there. It's not like there's truck traffic or anything, so the jog wouldn't make a difference. We never laid it out. Yeah. It, <clears throat> we just don't know that far ahead. Jerry? Sure. <laughs> the lot line as it's proposed in, in the uh, plan, it's going to be the center line of that street going north and south. When we, when we discussed it, as you recall here, when we discussed how we were going to come up with steps on that particular uh, area, we were very careful to oh, say yeah. that yeah, we would have a job yeah. on the west street as a result of the development. I don't know where they ended up with the utilities. That was part of the conversation early on. A <coughs> jog on West Street to further to the east. I, I don't recall that, but I, I don't know how far we got with that. I know, I know there were several different ideas of ways we could work that 17th road, but... Mm -hmm. um, And the other thing that I uh, wanted to bring to the council's attention was the, the right-of-way. There's almost 1.8 acres of right-of-way that's included in this uh, parcel, in this uh, plat. So <clears throat> 15 acres, we took a, our best guess at the time. The building is positioned further, to, uh, north east corner is positioned further to the west to allow for further development. Should we get Okay. Where are you back at? <laughs> this now. This That's it in a nutshell. It's basically. Is there is there some extra maybe in parcel two off to that west side? Yeah. Um, I mean the building can still fit, but. Um, it's, it's maybe 100, 115 feet, I think, is what we kind of looked at today in terms of what they could have. Still have a building, still have their setback for the side yard. I'm not talking about any roads either, but um, running the property line. But it's just, I mean, it's up to the council what you guys want to do. George, I propose that if Jamie can tell us definitively where that, how much room he needs for that easement. I can have the engineers move that over if that's a concern. But at the end of the day, <clears throat> you wanted to include, if this is your road, you want to include the easement for the utilities on lot two, <coughs> as to lot three. There's more land over here. There's less land over here. And the other thing is we've got a, uh, we've got the, um, uh, the drainage tile over here on lot two, that, on lot one, that really impacts us on what we can and can't do. You see it right there. <coughs> if West Street becomes a main artery for people coming in in their vehicles to work, um, <coughs> the straighter shot is going to be the fastest route rather than job right and then back left to get into that. Well, I would interrupt that point. Well, thanks for point. Everybody coming you don't want people the coming up from the, the park going out to work. Yeah, but yeah. You don't want to. Well, Can I answer yeah. Input. Just to really screw you up, is redevelopment, we've talked something totally different. So I can't tell you, and not to take a side, but in Jerry's defense, none of this has been 100% laid out. When we first started doing this, it's kind of wherever he starts. <laughs> Uh, one of our conversations through a monkey wrench in there was actually taking West Street out. It would not come over the tracks because <coughs> this, was, this was all speculation. If your bottle factory wanted to expand at some point in time, 
and go east, they're going to take some of that land anyway. So just to remember, you've got to think down the road farther than tomorrow. So. As far as the utilities, that's not a problem. We can get the utilities back in that area through a couple different ways. So I guess it boils down to whether we want West Street to extend to the south in the future or not, or if we want to have a job there. And, and there may never even be a road that goes back there. But we, we don't know. There's just too many roads right now. You may never have a manufacturing facility that goes that far either. But you might. But you might. The same as the road might. So it, it's up to you five to make a decision on what you do. You know, George, what I would propose, once again, Jamie can tell me specifically how much easement he needs on that western edge. I'll have the engineers redraw that a little closer. It may or may not line up with West Street. But if the concern is, is that western edge is maybe too far over, then I can have the engineers, as I said, redraw that line. I'm not guaranteed that it'll line up. But we have to have a 40 foot, um, we have to have a right of way if we're going to put the road in. We have to have a 40 foot side setback. So if you look at the line, <coughs> just so everybody understands what I'm talking about. Hey, that's a bit small. Yeah, I'm going to stand on the way. You guys see down there? Yeah. yeah. I just stand there. So the way this was designed, this was going to be the center line. With 80 foot, with, uh, 80 foot which is big enough for your roll if we were to extend it. Then the utility would be going to be along this line. If the road goes in here, we still have to have That's why the engineers are. Yes. Yes. What I'd be careful about is trying to engineer this. Do you want your truck back? No. Do you want them going to 31 or? See, I thought that that was the whole thing. We're going to bring truck traffic in from somewhere else. Not even use West Street. No, West West Street, my opinion, would be used for street traffic, cars, SUVs. Or whatever, right? But still, <coughs> if you want to that much traffic down through there, you're running semis down there every day right now. Yeah, right? No, no, yeah. not, 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 not supposed to. Two streets here are no trucks, and right? They, 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 they do, right? okay. We see them, and we know it, but yeah, they're not supposed to. Right. Yeah, okay. So the, the issue is do we grant them the extra, which the tech review says to do it, and we go ahead with the size of the building the way it's going to be already laid out? And we were about streets later. Right. Okay. No, the tech review said it was up to you guys. Yes, the tech review did, did not say did you not do it. I said you okay. recommended for us. Yeah. You're, saying, you're saying you're all for it, but it's our decision. No, no. no. The, the no. technical review committee is not <coughs> for this. What we were agreeing on was three parcels here and this would lay out as to however you wanted it to be. Okay, this is what we talked about. Not about where the streets are going to go. Taking more than was initially required. This is just what we said. Parcel here, parcel here, three parcels. And wherever this moves to is up to you guys. And Jerry's saying that he can he can have that redrawn with talking with Jamie and working with him to try to match up the center line of West Street to see where that line could be. But no, no, I just said as I move the line further over as far as we can, right, it may or may not, not line up. You don't know where that's going to be. Yeah, I don't want to, I don't want to engineer this at this table because that's why the engineers get paid to put everything on paper. But if the, yeah. if the concern is, is this line too far on over, <laughs> Jamie can tell me specifically where, how much easement he needs. Can we go back and we can probably move over to the east more, but I'm not guaranteeing that it's going to line up with West Street. You're not saying the building. The building. The building's yeah. where it's at. <coughs> where it's at. It's been designed to allow for some variations in here. I can't move it this way. That's a lot of metal up. <laughs> <laughs> the building, 
prepared exactly right. The building can't go any farther east. But if you shorten this up, brought this out, it still has the same square footage. Who said the building has to be rectangle? No, it's, it's, it's designed a special way, Chuck. I, I know more about buildings than you know. Okay, that's okay. so, fine. Okay. I'm not going to get into it. We're good. I understand. Thank you. Is everybody clear as mud or not? We got this down? The bottom line is that we need to decide to give them extra. Right. That's the bottom line. Mm -hmm. And then the rest of it we'll worry about it. 17.82 mm -hmm. instead of 15. So they Okay. So what are we looking at, Derek? What are you? What are we asking for? To, to let him go with the 17.82 versus the 15. Yeah, I mean, I mean that's all there is to it. Well, well the council has options in terms of council could say. We don't care, we'll, we'll just relinquish the 17.82. Council could say, Jerry, let's um, let's have you get with Jamie and, and see where you can get that line on the west boundary. And it can come close to matching up with West Street or not, but it's going to depend on where that building is right now. That's already been determined. So I see those as the two options. I guess the third option is you say, nope, we agreed to 15 acres and <laughs> that's what we agreed to, <coughs> but that's going to put a pinch on having a three hundred thousand or three hundred thousand square foot building on that parcel. Okay. Yeah. I'll make a motion that we give them give Marshall County Economic Development the seventeen point eight two acres. And so we're adding two point eight two acres to the agreement. Is there a second? I'll second. Motion and a second. Any further discussion on this now? We've heard both sides' input. If not, all in favor of the motion signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Opposed. Opposed. Pass three. Two. Okay, jump that hurdle. Thank you. Next, Derek. That's it. Well, that's it for attorney report. The next item on the agenda, I'll have something to talk about as well. Make a motion to accept the attorney report. Second. There's a motion and a second to accept the attorney's report. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Carried. Argus Community Development Court. I'm getting there. <laughs> All right, last meeting, and I had more than two weeks. I appreciate that. I realized that. But um, really wanted to look into, again, the whole concept of this Argus Community Development Corporation and then basically a contract for services is how this is being uh, presented with the town with the idea that that money would then be utilized to do a fair amount of things, not just development out in colonial estates, but would, would be utilized to do other things as well, but other services would be provided to the town. And I, I think there's been a summary presented to the council with this, uh, I don't know what we want to call this, but pamphlet, what have you, that we got to look at the last meeting. My concerns were just that this is a, it's an unusual arrangement, nothing that I've seen before, nothing that I'm familiar with, and I really wanted to look into it. Um, what I've done to look into that was I've talked to Jody Woods, who's a affiliate with the Indiana Association of Cities and Towns. Her response is, I can't answer your question. I basically <coughs> raised a, oh, a little over a page email kind of outlining the proposal, what it is that uh, is, is being discussed or, or talked about. She wasn't sure of anything one way or the other about it, but said that there was a gal there in her office. Um, that might be able to help or provide some insight. She had sent one email back with some cursory questions, but almost as if she didn't really comprehend what I was talking about, so I cleared things up to her, never heard back from her. 
there's a there's a thing called a list serve. It's basically the Indiana the attorneys that are associated with this Indiana Association of Cities and Towns. Basically, if you're a municipal lawyer, you can post a question on a list serve, and, and basically any attorney that's part of that organization reads that question. If they know anything about it, then they'll respond, and oftentimes they do. Um, I posted this this whole thing on listserv. I got one. I got two responses. One response was the guy that sent the redevelopment handbook from Barnes and Thornburg that I said might be good to just circulate to redevelopment. I don't know if you've got that yet or not. Yes, <coughs> he didn't answer the question. The other the other gentleman that responded said that they do something that's similar to that to get houses to Habitat for Humanity, but it doesn't involve any contract for services. So it was really kind of a, a sub issue, but. That's the only responses that I got. And, and guys, I mean, I'll tell you that, you know, I've spent a lot of time looking and trying to find basically a statute, some kind of regulation that says, no, you can't do it this way, you can't do this at all. I can't find it. Um, I'm not sitting here promising that it's not there somewhere, but I'm saying I can't find it. Nobody that I've talked to is aware of anything like that. So I'm at the point where I'm saying if, if council wants to move ahead with this, if ACDC wants to move ahead with this, I'm not going to sit here and say, no, I see something that says you can't do it. Um, <clears throat> I'm still going to be pretty cautious about how it's set up, the way it's set up. Um, I, I do kind of compare it to the MCEDC agreement that we have. It's a contract for services. Um, it, we, we pay MCEDC to get services. We don't get a product, but we get services. Um, so there's value to that, and that's really what we're talking about here with this ACDC corporation. So that's where I'm at with it. I'm not going to say, no, you can't do it. I haven't seen anything specifically say you can't. So. Any other Can I just say something? And I, and I totally I respect Sean's opinion and, and his concern. I think that we need to get over the the concept that this is just we're building one home. This isn't the fact that we're building a home. Um, I mean, as a matter of fact, the the in the ACDC we didn't set out to to want to build a home. That wasn't it. There's a whole lot of planning, a whole lot of discussions, a whole lot of meetings that have went into place. This is this is a community project, whether you, whether you want to believe it or not, or, or you're looking at it differently. The we build a home. You get, um, first of all, the, the home that we want to build or the home that we would build would be on a lot that is serviced by Argus Utilities. So first of all, Argus Utilities will get a return on that investment. Uh, the town of Argus gets a return. They get a higher assessed valuation. They get, enough, they get more property taxes. The school, the, the home that we're building, we're targeting a, a home that would house a family with children. So it isn't like we're not building a 900 square foot home. So there, hopefully we can get a couple kids, two, three kids. The school benefits from it. I mean, it's, it's a whole community project. Then from, from that sale of that home, the, the ACDC is then, we have a, a whole plethora of projects that, that we have talked about and that we would like to, to do and, and take on that the town doesn't have the time, the, the, the ability, or even the resources to, to take care of. For instance, we talked about the Speedway project. You've got all that in that, that brochure that you have. But, um, the, the Speedway property, there's, the, you know, we talked about a Christmas in April project. So, I mean, there's a lot of things that the ACDC wants to do. Not a, one of us on the ACDC is benefiting from this in any way. It's not for us. We're doing it for the community. So it isn't like we're getting something out of it other than seeing our community grow, seeing, seeing our community become larger rather than being stagnant. And to go back to the, the one of the main reasons is if you go back to our, our um, comprehensive plan this is all part of the comprehensive plan this is I mean how how many times and how many years have you as council people even sat up there and, and have heard there is no affordable quality housing in this town so I mean it's just an opportunity for to, to start and and you know I, I welcome like Chuck said I welcome and, and I think the whole board welcomes any developer that wants to come out there but if we get one started it's just like I mean you build one and then next thing you know you may have two three four going up so I mean it isn't to say that we want to build 13 homes out there. We just want to get started and then let it blossom on its own. There's, there's a lot of potential there for, for things bigger than just that one home. And that's what it's all about. Right. The town will also get the value of the lot up front. So they'll get the 
we will buy the lot from the town right up front to get started. And uh, I miss Chuck's input, but... Um, Other developers coming in. Right. The whole gist of our, or our idea with this, you can sit out there with 11 lots. It's very seldom that somebody puts a subdivision in, throws a for sale sign up, and somebody comes in and starts building houses. They want to see houses go. We hope to jumpstart that. And then Chuck brings in a developer or even just a contractor that builds another house. Maybe a year from now, it's stagnant again. We go back and build another one. So it's a boost to the economy of the town, uh, kickstart. There is other ground out there. So we would hope in a year or two, those 11 lots are full and we look to expand even further. I guess that would be the only other point I would bring up. There's no certain number. I don't want you to sit here and think, oh, 11 houses and the town of Argus is done. That's been our problem. So. Get in the mindset until you get 20 developers building 10 houses a piece, we're not done. So there's room, we need housing, and it's not just here, but we might as well try to beat these other communities to the punch. And you look at your local market. I mean, if you get a home in this town that is is a decent home, I mean, that is in good shape, <coughs> it does not last, it sells. Because there's people that want to live here, there's no one for them to live. No, no quality housing for them to move into. You might correct me if I'm wrong, but in the last four months, there's 14 months, there's been two new homes in that subdivision out there. And we're good. So doesn't it seem like that was a jump start? It, well, but you're, did anybody else jump start since then? I understand no, what you're no, saying, no. but we keep sitting back and nothing happening. Well, and I'm not disagreeing. Sitting back I just, for 40 years. I just know from the inspections that there's two new homes out there. That's <clears> and I hope to tell you the next year there's 10, but. I would agree. Do you guys have a budget on how you would spend? I didn't, I don't think I've seen it. I'm not going to say a budget per se. The housing that we want to put in is going to be that 150 to 1, probably 80 range, depending on what we can get back. Obviously, we're not going to go out and build a $250,000 house hoping that it sells. So right, right. we're trying to market to that smaller family, that, that, that affordable housing. So the other project stuff that's on that list that you probably <coughs> didn't say is kind of uh, some of that probably can start simultaneously. Some of this will take some, some we're still going to have funding campaigns and stuff like that. Right. I mean, this is trying to create this nonprofit is going to be to create a nonprofit. I mean, to answer so if you question. want to write a personal check, we'll take one also. <laughs> <laughs> to answer your question on the house, yes, we do have a budget. Okay. Um, we're with excavation, concrete, the house, getting it built or set. Um, we're probably shooting at that 175, 180 range um, to get it in and get it put and uh, landscaping the whole bit ready to sell. Okay, how much is the lot? I, I got a 10-9. 10, nine. Ten, nine. Ten nine. And then that would we, be included in that. We, before we even decided what, what a, a value or what we would like to spend on a home or what we think that is a need, we consulted with, with a realtor in Plymouth and he said, look, if you, if you had a home in that, you know, that range that we're talking, he says, in Argus, he said, we will sell. He said, it will sell. That home that's on the north side um, was 175000 the one that's on the east side, um, closer to 240 to 50 range. And he told us stick, you know, you want to stick between that 170 and 180 range to be able to sell. He said, you know, it's not that a $200,000 home won't sell, but it's not the one that's in as high demand and something that's going to sell as quickly as that 150 to 170. 180 must be your price point. He, 180. he said 179. 179. 179. So let's say you have 10 to $20,000 left. That's where you see in the list, like the, if, if eventually we get to the Speedway project. Oh, okay. Um, your, the Christmas rest, and April, your Christmas and April. We don't have anything set. set. That was and one reason we brought up the Pope one of the board members. So this is more of a general. This is a community. Of, this, is yeah. a start. I mean, this isn't just a housing project. This no, is a start. No, start. No. <laughs> and, and to get back to what Sean said, you know, there are a lot of things in this town that need to be done. But if if we don't grow, we don't get more tax money, we don't get larger base, we're never going to have the money to be able to do those things. 
and, it, and getting back a little bit, I mean, not necessarily we're going to go out and fix curbs or, or things like that, but um, the Christmas in April, that's going to be, I mean, you look at some of these homes and some of these people in this town that, that don't have the funds, that don't have the, the resources to repair their home. They may need something as simple as a front door. You know, they've got a rotted out front door. You know, that's a good Christmas in April project. That's, that's what the whole basis of, that's what we're doing. That's what we want to do. We're not, again, none of us are benefiting from this. We're not getting a nickel for doing it. We're giving everything back. I mean, we just want projects that, that make the town look better. The first thing you drive into town, you get it here at Michigan and, and uh, Walnut Street, what do you see? The old vacant speedway lot. I mean, that's one of the biggest, it's a, it's a big eyesore. So, I mean, that's, that's one of our targets. That is a target project of ours to be able to eventually somehow acquire that property and then make it look nice. However we do that. I mean, just to, to do something even just in the downtown is a huge benefit. Um, just to clarify a couple things, we, we looked at numerous houses, four, five mm -hmm. quotes to get in within that range of housing. So we looked at more than one, just so you know that. The second thing is that we, we've identified Christmas as April. Christmas in April is kind of our next mantra for the town. But we really can't even make a commitment to that till we know kind of what, what we got. We can't say we're going to do 20 houses in Argus. We can't say we're going to do 10. We can't say we're going to do one. But as a group, that is our next <coughs> project, is a Christmas in April uh, emphasis after the housing gets started. Yeah, we've got that housing project has been there for 15 to 18 years. <coughs> and if, if guys are wanting to build houses, why haven't they filled it up by now? That, that's my thought, and I agree with Rob. You know, get one up and get this thing started. Do you remember when the first two houses there on, on Marshall Street was built? The first, there's the, the box. It's been 20 years. At least, and close to that. And then, and then the rest of that set for a long time. <clears throat> yes, and then, then three or four went in, and then it went for a long time, and then uh, Stevens. And then that greenhouse, you know what I mean? And then these last two, but it seems like there's long spans yeah. between right. everything. Right, and, and, so, and sometimes it's hard for people to vision and, and, and see or even know what a house is going to look like if they're just looking at a, a book, exactly. looking at plants. Wow. So, I mean, that's the, the reason we want to put something. Yep. If you put it in, they can see it, they can touch it, they know what it looks like. And hopefully the, the, the um, intention is that while it's being built, while it's being put up there, the people that, that are wanting to buy it or the people that do ultimately buy it can pick their own paint color, their own siding, their own carpet, things like that. That is that is the intention. It's also the day and age we're in. It's the same reason we're building the manufacturing center. People don't have the ability, the want to sit and build a house. Right. Most people, boy, you put a new house for sale, though, they'll be right there and they want it. I'm going to say the next one I do is turn piano. <laughs> exactly. exactly. And that's, that's, that's what a lot of people are. I mean, and that's, and that's what we're going to do. I mean, again, like, like I said, there's nothing in for any of us. I mean, and again, if you go back and you look at your comprehensive plan that we spent all the time, all the money, and all the effort on, what was one of the main identified things in there is housing. There's two, two other points to that. Um, Judy was on the school board, my wife's on the school board. One of the things that needs to happen in this town is we need to bring kids into the school. I know of eight kids right now that their parents are driving them from other communities to go to school here. The school means that much to them. Now, out of those eight, there's at least a couple that if there was a home here, like what we're talking about, they would move here. On the, the houses themselves, we are looking to do in a full basement underneath the 1400 square foot so with egress windows so somebody could move in there they've got two kids they've got another one on the way they can expand finish the basement off um, so it's a house to where a family can grow in that house um, they can finish the basement later increase their value or sell it you know sell it that way uh, so that's kind of what we're looking at uh, our plans i guess are to incorporate with the school to, to grow grow the whole community yes the community it's not the town of argus i mean specifically but it is for the argus community that's what we are <coughs> okay i have a follow-up question for anybody in this group right here and it's just because i want to know has anybody done the math 
when the Fed gets done raising the rates this year, how affordable is a hundred eighty thousand dollar house to a family of four in Marshall County? Very. Yeah. Yeah, still, yeah, I, I mean, I'm just, mm -hmm. a realtor right now. If you had one sitting in Plymouth, they could sell ten. Because it's no secret. I mean, the interest rates are going to go up this year sure. substantially. Yep. Yep. But they're, they're, they're still mean, not going to be in it. No, exactly. I, mean, I understand yeah, that part. Yeah, but they're not going to be. Everybody's still just a la la land that we've been in. Uh, okay, yeah, we're right. good. Everybody's got their exactly. put out. Do you have just, question? Just one last question. Um, so it says contracting for five years with the town with 200000 paid up front. Does that mean you guys are liable to come back and ask for more money at some point? No. If you want my honest to God, since I was the one that kind of put this together when I was on the council. My goal in all this is to get this started. I don't know how we would do it yet, but I'd love to tell you that we sell 200 houses and we have that much money to give back to you. Okay. Okay. But I'm not quite sure how that would work out yet. But more or less when this started, other communities were doing this. So I looked in and saw and uh, there's just not an easy way to, as a council, you can't come tomorrow and put a house in. <coughs> Part of that, Dylan, is with a five-year contract and like Randy is on our board. Right. Well, we're gonna, you're gonna be made aware of what, exactly what we're doing, how we're doing it, what it's costing, everything like that. Right. We're obligated to do that because we've got the five-year contract. Right. Right. Okay. okay. To ex to expand on that just a little bit, so we put this first house in and say we've got 165 thousand in it. We sell it for 180. We profit 15 thousand. That profit from that is what we would do use for the Christmas and April different programs. That 165 will go back into the account to do another house. Or if, if at that point in time the council says, you know what, we've got we've got another thing going over here we think you guys should should help us with. So it will always be revolving to where we That's can what I figured. I this just wanted to make sure, sure. Yeah. Yes. 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 that wasn't something. It's not a bad idea. Yeah. Well, you need some <laughs> do we need some kind of well, first of all, we've got to figure out a contract. Okay. So you can't, you know, we can't say, okay, we're going to give you two hundred thousand dollars, but we have a contract. So we need to have. That's Derek. why God made attorneys. We we need to have Derek make a. That's <laughs> the vote. If you guys. So, so we need a motion to have Derek make a contract. <coughs> yeah, we'll need a motion for him to pursue a contract. And, and Randy, you know, I mean, I've already pulled. Again, I'm, you know, I've kind of looked at this right. the, the service agreement that yeah. we have with MCDC, and it's. Going to really be kind of the framework or the basis for an agreement yeah. that we would have with ACDC. Just change the wording and yeah. a little what's, bit. What's pertinent to it? And, yeah. Yeah. No, there'll be some changes, no yeah. doubt. But I mean, that's kind of the framework. But I mean, you want to put in a guarantee that you guys are going to build a house within the first year with this, yeah. yes. just like that. Absolutely. You know what I'm saying? Right. Yeah. You're going to guarantee we're going to build right. a house. I mean, this will be me asking him after the fact if you do that. But I'm sure there could be something put in there. If this board would dissolve. The money goes back to the town. Right, right. Yeah, the money's going to be spent pretty quick. No, <laughs> I'm just talking about what they're saying. I mean, you're saying by the time they build a house and pay you, we're going to be out of money? Is that what you're saying? <laughs> <laughs> by the time Derek gets his building for the house. And that's the thing, I'm not hearing they're paying me, but. Um, and, and, and we'll come up. These are things you guys do right. need to consider and think about, but money paid up front is money that you're not going to have a real good chance of getting back. The best you're probably ever going to do is get a lien on some kind of real estate that's still owned if there was an issue or a problem, but short of that, you're you're going to be chasing a 501c3 corporation with little to no assets at a lot of the time. So we need that. We need a meeting on <coughs> setting up a contract, a workshop. I think you need a motion first to Go to reach an agreement with ACDC. Well, that's the contract. Mm -hmm. No. You have to vote to do that and then pursue the contract, correct? You can vote to approve this this theory, this idea, this concept that, yeah, this is how we're going to do it, and then work to finalize the agreement in a contract. And I can, again, I can, I can get a draft around by the time of the next meeting, but it, it's going to be something that both sides are going to need to look at and say, well, we need to tweak this, put this in, take that out, or whatever you guys want to do. But at the end of the day, yeah, there's got to be a meeting of the minds. These two entities, the council and ACDC, that says, yeah, we can do this. We'll get, on our side, we'll get an attorney, so we can kind of interest just an attorney the whole thing, so we can scratch heads together. Uh, 
we're going to be bonded and we'll have liability insurance and all that. Right. I don't know, I'd rather see money going into a community project and people actually being involved. I mean, we could repair our own curbs and everything like that, but if there's nobody behind there to maintain the curbs at some point, then like KCDC, I'd, I'd rather see the money go to a group, like a nonprofit like that. Suzanne, That's just me. can you come up with a motion? <laughs> I move that we go forward the contract with ACDC and the town for the 200000 five-year agreement by their service agreement. I'll second to There's a motion and a second to move forward with the not-for-profit for the community with the 200000 All in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed, same sign. Okay, now we got to get together on this contract. My reasoning for this is we've we've heard. Uh, and, no, and I don't again, want to rush into no, 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 no. anything. So. For Sean and for Mark in the back and for anybody else, this being up here, the reason I'm going for this is this is my 12th year. <coughs> we've been stagnant for 10, at least by no fault of anybody's but all of us. I mean, I'm just as well off. We did the Uptown project for $30,000. <coughs> argument was taxpayer money, what have you. Yes, did, did we give Sean $10,000 to fix his house up? No, did we give anybody money to fix up their houses? So we're always gonna have that argument. If we bought the property, we're starting the shell building. If this is another step, I'm for it. Why? <laughs> manufacturing <laughs> center, Jerry. You're going to have to beat that into our heads yet. You have to be good until tonight. Until tonight? Stop hey, listening to me, George. No kidding. What if it becomes a warehouse? So, <laughs> motion, won't carry. Up. motion <laughs> carry. We won't go to the And, and yes. you're, go ahead. Go ahead. Well, Chuck, yeah. you said that you have uh, uh, developers that you're going to talk to so that, uh, that don't stop them. No, and already, oh, yeah, and no. please know that we have already we been doing the same it. thing. We yeah. had a, pres a presenter at our last, well, one of our last meetings, not at the ACDC meeting, but the task force meeting who has, he has some, some great leads and some things. So, I mean, we're not looking to do this whole thing ourselves. We're looking to start it and have some, we want somebody to come in and take it over. I mean, that portion of it, um, that's, that's our intent. If it gets done and you build, if you get the first house built and somebody else comes in and builds the rest of them, you can start doing the Greenway projects and hey. Well, no, exactly. we'll come back and say, where do you want us to go? Where do you yeah, want us to yeah. do that? That's the idea. Where do you want us to go next? What do you want us to do? Right, exactly. And hopefully okay. we both expand right. this through here. Suzanne's got something she'd like to say. Well, I facilitate basically the task force at the moment. And in doing that, I've been tracking the vitality indicators for Argus. And our numbers are just sliding down. You know, Argus is on a downward, just slightly, and we have to do something. We are making progress, and hopefully the manufacturing center will help, but we have to keep pushing forward because we've got to get that trend turned around and start going back up. We've got to get more people into the town. Our tax asset base, you know, that's been going down. It has to increase. Kids in the school income within the town, which means more people. We just have to get more change within this town. Sometimes it's hard to grow, but it's necessary. Because the way the state is funding both the town and the school, small communities are not looked at favorably by the state. So we have to get, I don't want to be big, but we have to grow a little bit just to survive. <coughs> because we're challenged. <coughs> to me, we're at a fragile point. We can either continue going down or can change that trajectory. This time last week, I wasn't in favor of it. <laughs> oh, yeah. We appreciate you, you guys. Why not? Have that Jerry, board. you're waving your finger back there. Has this got to do with the manufacturing center? There's a little better around than one you think of. Logistics. The important thing to, to look at is, is what you. Not only the comprehensive plan, but it's investing in yourselves. At the end of the day, it's when I have somebody 
trying to look at the manufacturing center, we want to be able to demonstrate, we want to be able to communicate how this community is investing in itself. If I can't point to that, it's hard for me to say invest in this town, we don't invest in ourselves. It's much easier for me to say invest in ourselves, look at how we are investing in the community too. In the 20 some odd years I've been in this business, I learned that very early on. It's an easy conversation. You get always success in selling manufacturer to come locate and you say, look at what we're doing to invest in ourselves. That shows that the community seat has a vision and they're willing to put their money behind their own vision. Okay. Can I add to that? Sure, why not? I just want to say that John, you're going to hear about walking past. You'll hear more about this later, but I, I think there's no better time to be in Argus right now. I think the manufacturing center is awesome. I think this potential for new housing, regardless of how it occurs, the framework is there. I think there's a lot of other projects that the task force is looking at, starting to prioritize, and it's <coughs> an extremely nice, viable community to live in with a superb school system. There, to me, there's no better time to be in Argus than right now. John, let me add a little to that. This town are uh, different departments that take care of everything in this town and have, over the years, really dragged their feet along. There's a lot of things that never got done. But you know, we've got, you go down to the park and you look down there where they're digging and putting all these out. There's, there's more work been done in the last three months than there has been in almost the 10 years. Of yes. some of our, and right back there is the guy that's kind of, uh, got all this railroad it started you might say and he's getting it done and it's just and this town is it we're getting a lot of things fixed Jamie knows budget's done no more raises Jamie sorry <laughs> but, but it's, yeah, it's, it's a good time when those things are happening the, these problems we've had for years and everybody just kind of well I don't want to stick their head in the sand or we got other things to do and they ignored it now we're getting these things done. The more projects we get finished, the more things we get done, the better it's going to be. So, if you're not moving forward, you're moving backwards. As Jerry fills up the manufacturing center, those houses are going to be full. They're going to be full. Yes. They'll, they'll, there's and no way that, I mean, he's going to bring in more people. Oh, so this all goes back to Jerry. Yeah. It's all Jerry shoulders. <laughs> oh. Okay. I, I, I think I think all right, let's move on. I think we've come to the, the to the conclusion that we're all in favor of bettering the community. So next we have board openings on the plan commission, redevelopment, and the BZA. Other old business. The only thing John Vanderwell here can kind of get up on that. We had talked about the Wayfind sign grant. Oh yeah. If you wanted to throw out there real quick, what you guys decided on that? Um, we worked on that. It's waiting till fall. Perhaps. At least because At least. we didn't want to jump into that and and not be prepared and make us look like total idiots. So uh, we're search surveying that and looking into it, researching it more. I think actually it's going to put us at risk by waiting because we found some other options and some other some other resources rather than just the one. And the reason I brought that up was because the town had said we were going to. Yeah, right. Thank you. And yeah. once we get this, so right now, it's, proposal, for now it's tabled until the fall, okay. and we're working on some of the things that probably add to that. Actually, we just need a complete, complete project. And I guess to explain, Suzanne brings that up that we have these meetings. That's what the task force will end up doing. We'll get this stuff around, and you'll probably get presented ninety percent of it, but not everything, because I mean we talked walking past, which is a park issue. So, I mean, there'll be some stuff that'll go to these other departments, but a lot of this stuff will actually come back to your board. <coughs> okay. Jamie, has everything been ordered? You take all the vehicles and everything? Yeah. Did, yeah. You, did we sell the old backhoe? No, not yet. Okay. We, we got listed for, for yeah. bids, but we have, I don't think we've received any yet, so. <laughs> We've got the brain in line anyway. Okay. So <laughs> hey, did you hear John Fine answered if we buy it back? <laughs> I'm hearing right behind you that he needs a backup. 
There you go. Any other old business? Sign your name. We'll fill it out. If there's no other old business, any new business tonight? Um, I guess in a way. I was contacted last week on the visitor's guide for this coming year. The problem was it was due today. <laughs> and it was well, $799 for a full page ad. And I didn't move forward with it. We didn't have much time anyway. But the task force is looking at a marketing brochure for the town. So for about, I'm guessing for about the same amount of money or somewhere in that range, we can have a brochure all for artists that we can get out, which I think is probably more beneficial than one page in a guide. Mm -hmm. And we did discuss that at the park board as well. The park board is on board with going in with you as yeah. part of our marketing. But I put a little oomph into that from a tourism standpoint. They added a secondary round of grants this year for that type of thing, for towns to do marketing rather than just specific event items. I think they set up $10,000. So uh, and we're going to put in for that as the town. So if we can get $2,000 from them for that, we'll use that money towards that. As a matter of fact, it's not supposed to be an event. It's supposed to be an event. Yeah, it's a marketing. I would just add that this is good. we want it to be more than a paper brochure. We want it to also be a digital brochure. Something that can be shared on Facebook and Twitter. And okay. <laughs> Anything else? No, we're going to do polls. <laughs> well, I was contacted by Marshall County Historical Society. They are considering doing an architectural tour. This is still in the works. But in Argus, probably this summer, we're <coughs> Fulker Homes. So this is in the talking stages. Possibility. <coughs> the first thing that came to mind when she called and talked to me, I thought, we need to clean up Argus. <laughs> curb appeal. If we're going to have people coming into our town, let's be proud of it. That's my thought. It's just, just the little things, making sure the homes are neat, the streets are appealing. Sometimes it's just that little flower pot in the corner or something that makes all the difference. Okay. Thank you. Move on to claims. <coughs> Lisa. The total docket for um, February 7, 2018 is uh, $305,956.41. The top five claims read as follows. Number one is IMPA at $147,689.51. Number two is payroll number two, which is $34,310.14. Number three is Anthem at $22,211.61. Number four is our first source lease bank payment of $18,254.29. And number five is Republic Services at $12,296.52. The top five claims total $234,762.07 and represent 77% of the total docket. A motion? To make a motion, we accept claims <coughs> 15 through 199. Is there a second? Second. Any discussion on the claims? Any questions? All in favor of signal by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Passed. Again, thanks everyone for showing up. I know most of tonight was about the benefit of Argus growing, so we appreciate that. Motion to adjourn. Make a motion to adjourn the meeting. Second. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? <coughs> Talk to you afterwards. Bye. So. Okay.